This can also serve as a little bit of a uh, sort of class primer for the Watcher if you're just starting out with her and unfamiliar with some of her core mechanics. There's are the common cards of the Watcher and how they kind of play into and contribute to her style of uh, setting up powerful damage turns and booping the enemies in Act 1. Hey, 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 everybody. Baylor here in the big cozy chair. And today I want to talk about the Watcher, the ascetic monk who traverses the spire, bopping all of her foes with that staff. Specifically, I want to talk about the Watcher's common cards and which of those cards are good to take in the Watcher's early game. This can also serve as a little bit of a uh, sort of class primer for the Watcher if you're just starting out with her and unfamiliar with some of her core mechanics. So I'm going to go through really quickly here each and every one of her 20-some common cards, talk about what they add to the Watcher's starting deck and uh, how those can help shape your Act 1. For full context, the Watcher starts with a deck of four defends, four strikes, one eruption, which puts her into Wrath Stance, causing her to both deal and receive double damage from attacks. This Wrath Stance is very much a core part of the Watcher's starting playstyle, and uh, usually ends up being a central piece of most mid to late game Watcher decks as well, being a very, very important part of your damage output. Uh, having control over when and how you enter Wrath is a big part of your game as Watcher. There's also Vigilance, which lets you enter Calm or eat and block. Calm Stance in, itself, in and of itself doesn't do anything, but when you leave Calm Stance, for example, by entering Wrath, you'll immediately gain two energy. So it's a, a sort of way to, to bank up for the future. And that shapes a lot of the core design philosophy behind the Watcher and her cards is a sort of setup mechanic where the Watcher plans ahead by looking at her draw pile with stuff like scry effects, which appear on quite a few of her cards. Scry lets you look at the top X cards of the draw pile and you can discard them. It's almost as valuable as card draw, in some cases more so, and uh, really helps with setting up your future turn. There's also a bunch of cards with retain on them. Cards that say retain don't leave your hand at the end of the turn, instead being kept for the next so on and so forth. Every single turn they'll they'll stay around in your hand, and that is also helpful for setting up future turns. So these mechanics all try to uh, to work together. With that said, let's start talking about each of these common cards and what they add. Bowling Bash is definitely one of my favorites first in the list alphabetically here, does 7 damage for each enemy in combat, uh, and if you give that an upgrade it becomes 10 uh, per enemy. So in 3 enemy fights, which are relatively common in Slay the Spire, this hits for 21 or 30 base damage, and uh, as we look at a lot of these attacks, I think the context of Wrath Stance has to be taken in mind. The ideal is that you'll be in Wrath when you play your most damaging cards to get those doubled. With that said, Bowling Bash becomes a really excellent way to pick off a single target in multi-enemy fights. This card is absolutely your best friend when it comes to dealing with um, the three centuries elite of Act 1, against whom the Watcher is fairly weak. It's very good against the three slavers encounter in Act 2, or the three cultist encounter in Act 2, pretty much picking off one of those enemies almost for free. It's great against the Darklings and the Jawworms of Act 3 as well. Basically a, a really solid damage common card. It's it's not even that bad, you know, 7, seven or 10 is, isn't terrible if you have to play it against a single target, but as long as there's more than one target on the field, this card becomes exceptional and is really, really good at, um, at putting enemies in the ground. You can kind of thinking, think of it as a an AoE card of sorts. Deal 7 times the number of enemies in combat is the same total damage output as something like Cleave, which you could read as deal 8 for each enemy in combat, except it deals it all to each different enemy, whereas the Bowling Bash does it all to one. And this can be really helpful for uh, enemies like the Gremlin Leader or the Raptomancer who summon minions. Uh, all in all, a really versatile card, a really powerful card. I highly recommend taking it. It's not the most important upgrade in the world, but it definitely helps. 
Another decent card for multi-enemy fights, Consecrate. It's a nice little cheap AoE, zero cost, deal five damage to all enemies. I really like this card with an upgrade on it. Uh, you get plus three to each enemy without, uh, you know, attached to a zero cost card. So it's just big free damage, basically. And this is 16 in damage if you're in Wrath Stance, which is uh, very mighty indeed. So if you're able to upgrade this card shortly after picking it up, or you already have an upgrade, all's the better. This is also a great card to pair with an effect like Fasting, which reduces your energy gain to gain some strength, or any other source of strength, like from a Relic or something, would be great with this. So I love an early Consecrate, uh, especially with an upgrade on it. Crescendo is a very cool little... I guess I would call this a, a setup stance control card. Or this idea of stance manipulation, which we'll come back to with some of the other uh, commons in the Watcher pool. These are cards that allow you to change your stance, first and foremost. Uh, and that's really, really important since the downside of Wrath is so severe. You don't want to get caught in it when enemies are attacking you. In this case, um, <clears throat> Crescendo is a card that retains and lets you enter Wrath. And the idea behind Crescendo is that since it retains, you will always have the option to enter Wrath available whenever it is that you draw a handful of damage cards and then want to end the fight with them. One of the biggest problems that early game Watcher will run into is not drawing your Eruption, or whatever your Wrath's entry might be, on the same turn as you draw all the damage cards, and then you're forced to either end your turn in Wrath and take a bunch of damage, or wait until you draw Eruption and some damage cards again. Crescendo sidesteps that whole problem by saying you have the option to enter Wrath in your hand, and that's, that's really good. I like an early Crescendo. Uh, especially if you find yourself struggling to line up your damage with your Wrath, this can be a really simple way to solve that. The upgrade on it makes it zero cost, which is pretty good if you're uh, operating on low energy, but I don't like to grab this upgrade while I'm still in Act 1. I like to know ahead of time if I'm, uh, if I'm getting an energy relic from the boss or not. So, I think Crescendo is an okay take in Act 1. I don't recommend it over taking an actual um, direct stance control card that has a, an additional benefit, like an Empty Fist or a Tantrum. And I don't recommend it over an attack, but it's definitely a solid pickup if you're finding it difficult to uh, get opportunities to enter Wrath. Crush Joints, this is one of my favorite Watcher commons. I really, really like it. It's one of the only sources of Vulnerable available to the Watcher, the other one being the uncommon card Crescendo, and this one's far easier to get. It does pretty reasonable damage. Eight is not that much, but by Watcher card standards, it's pretty decent. Um, and it'll apply one Vulnerable if the last card played was a skill. This is a pretty easy condition to meet. You can simply play the Miracle that Watcher has at the start of each combat to activate this effect, or line it up with a defend or other skill. The upgrade is super important on this one. The two damage isn't significant, but the one extra turn of vulnerable, one additional turn of 50% more damage, that's huge and very, very important. Crush Joints and its sister card, Sash Whip, which I'll also talk about at the same time. A very, very similar card. Does identical damage, but a slightly different condition. If the last card played was an attack, instead apply one weak, reducing enemy damage. This has the same incredibly valuable upgrade because of that plus one to the status duration. Both of these cards, both Sash Whip and Crush Joints, I think are very, very good pickups at the start of Act 1. They allow you to get some early status application into the deck. They're a really solid attack, and they are, are good candidates for your upgrades, so I like uh, strongly recommend taking either or both, whichever one you see, and giving them an upgrade and seeing how they perform. Cut Through Fate, another exceptional common card for the Watcher, another one of my favorites here. Cut Through Fate does... I'm gonna call it slightly subpar damage. Seven, you know, eight being a par for uh, the Watcher's attacks. And it scries two and draws one card, and that doesn't sound like a whole lot, but it's actually kind of huge. You get to look at the top two cards of your deck, discard either of them, um, and then draw the top card of your deck, whatever's left. Uh, and, you know, you'll discard the third card off the top of the deck if... You'll draw the third card off the top of the deck if you discarded both of them. 
So Cut Through Fate essentially becomes look at the top three cards of your draw pile and draw any three of them, essentially. Although you don't get to know what the third card is. Either way, it's a lot of option, uh, and that it's attached to a reasonable damage card is great. Ultimately, this allows you to maintain damage output while digging through your draw pile, looking for the other cards that you might need, like setting up your future draw or getting into your hand right now the card that you need to exit Wrath Stance, the card that you need to block this turn, whatever it might be. Empty Body and Empty Fist, I'll talk about these both together because they both serve a fairly similar purpose. Both of these cards say exit your stance. Empty Body is a uh, block card, blocking for 7 or 10 upgraded, whereas Empty Fist is an attack dealing 9 or 14 upgraded. Which is quite flank frankly ridiculous. Both are cards I rate very highly, because just the ability to exit your stance, whatever it might be, is quite useful. If you're in Wrath, you may want to exit Wrath to avoid enemies dealing double damage to you, and if you're in Calm, you may want to gain the two energy that you get for leaving Calm. Additionally, exiting your stance counts as changing your stance for the purposes of the cards Flurry of Blows and Mental Fortress, so you may activate additional effects from things in your deck if you uh, have either of these. As such, I think they're both really good early pickups. They give you a bit more control over what stance you're in, um, which is extremely valuable, and particularly the Empty Fist comes packaged with a heck of a lot of damage, too. If you take an Empty Fist, and I highly recommend that you do, definitely make sure you try to upgrade it, because that plus 5 is well above par for an attack upgrade, with most attacks getting a, a plus 3 or plus 4 for their upgrade, usually. The plus 5 on Empty Fist is crazy good. So definitely take Empty Fist and upgrade it. Empty Body is a bit more skippable, just because... Um, I think attacks are more important for the Watcher in the early game. It's all about setting up into Wrath Stance and then executing your opponents with impunity using that uh, double damage. The blocking, not quite as important, but if you're fighting the Guardian at the end of your act, I definitely recommend an Empty Body. Whereas um, if you're fighting either Hexaghost or the Slime Boss, uh, an Empty Fist will serve you extremely well. Next on the list, Evaluate. It's solid block and puts an insight into the draw pile. Insight being zero cost, retain, draw two. The net effect of this is that evaluate, uh, it's kind of like a shrug it off, almost. You squint really hard. Um, blocks for six and then is a net of plus one, or well, net, net zero on the draw actually. As the insight draws two, but you have to draw the insight itself. That's minus one draw and then minus one draw for drawing the Evaluate. So very, very similar to a Shrug It Off. The upgrade is plus four block though, which is really solid. Not a lot of one energy block cards get plus four on the upgrade. And this upgraded version I think is a really efficient and really good card, whereas I don't like the unupgraded version so much. I don't think this is a very good card in Act One uh, for a number of reasons. The Elite Gremlin Knob really punishes you for playing skills, and both the Evaluate and the Insight become a problem in that case. It, um, it just doesn't get you uh, ahead of the curve enough either on the, on the damage. I generally don't like taking blocks in the early game, so I don't advocate for early game Evaluates. I, I definitely think of this as more of a mid to late game card. Do look for upgraded copies if you see them in your run, a Toxic Egg or just randomly upgraded. Uh, I do think those are very good. And note that the Insight because it exhausts is extremely good with the Dead Branch Relic, as well as uh, a couple of other similar effects. Flurry of Blows, one of the cool little returning attacks the Watcher has, the other one being Weave. Flurry of Blows is the only uh, common card of the two though. It's only four damage, but returns to your hand from the discard pile whenever you change stances. So entering calm, leaving calm, entering wrath, leaving wrath, Anytime your stance changes, even if that one of the two stances you were in uh, is no stance, then this card comes back to your hand. Flurry Bows blows pairs really well with any kind of scry effects. Uh, because you can scry it. If you see it in the draw pile with scry, you can opt to put it into the discard pile, and then it gets to go back into your hand from there. Despite the seemingly low damage, because you're able to play it multiple times, this card adds up really quick. 
Although I don't think it gets truly out of control unless you can add some points of strength or some kind of relic interaction. That said, I think it's a completely reasonable take on floor one, and you'll find it hitting for, you know, four plus eight when it comes back into your hand as you enter Wrath. Uh, and then possibly another four as you leave Wrath on that same turn, so it can it can reasonably do with something in the realm, realm of 8 to 16 damage uh, on any given turn. The upgrade is really good as well, giving it uh, only plus two, but as aforementioned, it's coming back to your hand multiple times and potentially being multiplied by Wrath Stance, so that plus two can become plus eight if you return it a couple of times, or if uh, one of those instances is being doubled. And that's a good thing to um, quickly touch on, too, is that for the Watcher, because you have access to this Wrath Stance to double your attack damage, the uh, upgrades on attacks become essentially twice as valuable. Plus 5 on Empty Fist, if you're in Wrath Stance, becomes plus 10, since that plus 5 gets doubled, and that is an enormous amount of damage. This is why I highly advocate... Uh, upgrading your attacks, the, the the handful of attacks that you pick up in the start of your game as Watcher. I, I highly recommend upgrading them. Flying Sleeves is another really good candidate for that upgrade. It hits for 4 damage twice, upgrades to 6 damage twice, and uh, the kicker with the Flying Sleeves is that it's a retain card, uh, staying in your hand until you opt to play it. And just like Crescendo, the, the point here is to allow you to line up your damage cards and your Wrath entry, in this case by retaining the damage card rather than by retaining the Wrath. But the result is the same. You hold on to this card until you're ready to play it with multiplied damage of some kind. If you're going to take this card, again, definitely upgrade it. I think it is a, a pretty good take despite, again, the low base damage. Um, because of that retaining property, but if you already have retain on, say, your Wrath Entry, if you already have a Crescendo, then the retaining aspect of the Flying Sleeves is a lot less valuable. You want retain on one thing or the other, but not necessarily both. Follow up another pretty okay early game card for the Watcher, and again, another one with an exceptional upgrade, plus four to the damage of this one. In this case, you get the energy back, if the last card played was an attack. So follow-up is frequently played for uh, for zero energy. And I think it's an excellent first pick into your deck. It does quite solid damage. And uh, if you can get it upgraded, which isn't unreasonable, then it does heckin' good damage. I'd say 11 for one or potentially zero energy is definitely excellent on Watcher. So follow-up, a, a great early game card. I highly recommend it. It's not difficult to activate the effect on it. It's just good. Alt is uh, an interesting one. This is one of my favorite cards from the Watcher's common pool. It's a zero-cost block that uh, gives you more block if you're in Wrath Stance. Wording on this card can be a little bit tricky to read. If you are in Wrath Stance, both of these effects kick in, so you'll gain the 3 block and the 9 block for a total of 12 if you're in Wrath, and upgraded, that goes to 4 plus 14 for 18 block for zero energy in Wrath. This card is an enormous amount of block if you can get the the Wrath Stance uh, activated, so much so that it's sometimes completely reasonable to just completely block your opponent and stay in Wrath, uh, more so than it is to exit the Wrath Stance for the, uh, for the attack turn. You just stay in Wrath and laugh. Now, this pairs exceptionally well with any kind of Retain, whether it be of the Halt itself with Runic Pyramid, or if you have Retaining Wrath, such as Crescendo, or just a lot of card draw. This is great. Another important thing to note with this card is that both of these numbers benefit from Dexterity. Um, each point of Dexterity improves the block of block cards by one. And with one point of dex from, say, an Ali Smooth Stone, this becomes gain 5 block. If you're in Wrath, gain an additional 15 block for a total of 20. Making this one of the very few cards in Slay the Spire that benefits multiple times per point of dexterity. Yeah, as long as you're in Wrath. Really cool. Because of that. Uh, and a really unique effect. If you want some, some truly excellent block, of course, be in Wrath, play Halt, and then leave Wrath. And you can... Uh, you can generate a whole heck of a lot that way. That said, the kicker with Halt is, of course, that you have to draw this when you're in Wrath or have the ability to enter Wrath in order for it to be useful. 
and you have to not kill your opponent, you know, and want to still block. And that's not all that frequent, I think, with the Watcher. It's a lot of times just easier to simply kill your opponent or to, uh, to continue setting up your future turns than it is to make this work. Now, situations where Halt is great are if you have Dexterity, if you have a lot of card draw, if you have the Fasting power that makes you lose your, uh, your energy gain per turn in exchange for more strength and Dexterity. Anytime you've got modifiers to this, it's going to be really, really good. Speaking of things that are good with modifiers, Just Lucky is a card pretty much built for it. It's zero cost and just does a couple of things. One scry, two block, three damage. Individually weak effects. Uh, and the idea with this card, I think, is that it's intended to be a uh, platform upon which you stack modifiers. The scry effect will activate um, some of Watcher's powers and relics. The block can be increased with points of dexterity. The damage can be increased with points of strength. Uh, you're playing an attack, so that may also activate relics. I don't think this is a particularly good card to add to the starting deck, but if you have two or more relics, or powers, or other cards that interact with it, uh, I think it starts to become worthwhile. So if you've got like a kunai and an ornamental fan, or a vajra and a shuriken, then I think this card becomes a totally worthwhile pickup. But don't take it before it's comboing with things, because again, the, the base values offered by the card are just so low. The upgrade isn't that significant either, a plus one to everything. It's a nice free upgrade to have, but I don't think something that's necessarily worth investing an upgrade into. Pressure points. I think the black sheep of the Watcher Common family. This card is powerful in theory, but I think awkward and um, a bit YOLO in practice. Pressure points applies eight of a debuff called Mark, and then all enemies lose health equal to that, the value they have of that debuff. This is the only card that features this Mark keyword. Essentially what this means is that your first pressure points does eight damage, the second one does 16, then 24, 32, so on and so forth. The more of these that you can get into your deck, the stronger they each become. Kind of similar to the defect card Claw, but with less ways to, to synergize. The, the core problem uh, with pressure points is that there's not a lot of other cards that work with it. This doesn't benefit from being in Wrath Stance or Divinity Stance. It's not an attack card. It, it, there's just so many things that it, it fails to interact with, and the really only things that you want with pressure points are more copies of pressure points, uh, the ability to scry or draw so that you can get back to those copies of pressure points, and maybe a meditate so that you can pull them back into your hand, but that's about it. I don't recommend taking uh, a pressure points, personally. The second and third pressure points are pretty good, but that first one's a real stinker, and there's no guarantee that you'll see a second one, which is fundamentally the problem with this card. There's just no guarantee you'll find the second one. That kind of applies to Prostrate, too, but I think Prostrate's a, a much better blind take, because there are many more Mantra cards than there are cards that feature Mark. Prostrate as a zero energy block I think is great with anything providing dexterity, like Fasting. Uh, and the goal here with, uh, with Prostrate is that it's starting you towards the journey of Mantra. If you gain 10 Mantra, you enter the extremely powerful Divinity Stance gaining three energy and dealing triple damage, but the first mantra card you take is not going to be enough. You need, uh, you need upgraded mantra cards, ideally multiple of them, uh, and preferentially a really small deck of cards so that you can draw those cards over and over again. I think Prostrate becomes a, a, an okay take once you've got a couple good attacks, uh, and especially so if you have a couple of cards removed or some decent scry. If you're going to, you know, if you're going to start taking Mantra cards, this is a good one to start with. But it's not a high priority for me, so I don't strongly advocate this card. And I don't recommend upgrading it until you get your second Mantra source. Now, once you have another Mantra source, even if it's a second Prostrate, uh, you know, if it's a, a Prey or a Worship or what have you, then start upgrading the Mantra cards. The end goal with a, to, to create a, a really functional Divinity deck, you want to remove a lot of cards, you want a lot of card draw, and you want to make sure your mantra sources are giving a lot of mantra. 
And that's once it starts to work, once you're able to reliably enter Divinity, it's so, so powerful. All right, last few here real quick. Protect! It's Retaining Block, which is nice. I don't like this card too much. It is relatively efficient to uh, two energy, 12 block, and the fact that it retains can be really helpful, ensuring that you've got this beefy block on the turn that you need it. But usually, especially in the early game, I would rather invest into my offense, uh, and this can be a really annoying dead draw on a, a turn that you're not being attacked. Even again, though, even though it does offer that retain to it, the upgrade on this is plus four block, which I don't think is a particularly good upgrade either. Plus four block on a two energy card is a pretty solid increase in block, but you already have access to a upgrade like this in the Watcher's starting deck by upgrading Vigilance, and I think this is a pretty, uh, a pretty solid block upgrade. If you're going to invest more heavily in your defense, absolutely consider upgrading Vigilance. Once you have that upgraded, then and only then should you really think about the Protect upgrade. So my recommendation, avoid this one in the first few floors, look for offensive options instead, but in a pinch, it's not bad and definitely good against the Guardian boss of Act 1. We already talked about Third Eye, next in the block list, sorry, we already talked about Sashwin. Next in the block list here is Third Eye, and I think this might be one of the best, if not the best, Watcher common out there. It's three Scry, you get to look at the top three cards of the draw pile, discard any of them, as well as 7 block. Compare this to Shrug It Off in Ironclad, which is 8 block, draw 1. Scrying 3 cards and potentially discarding all of them is much, much more valuable than only drawing 1. And the upgrade to this both increases the block amount and it gives you 2 more scry for scry 5. This is definitely the best block upgrade that Watcher has, and I, I highly recommend taking and upgrading Third Eyes in the early game if you see them. The amount of control it gives you over the draw pile, letting you set up an entire hand worth of draws. Scrying 5 lets you see exactly what your next turn draw is going to be, and you can make modifications to that if you feel the need. This is super, super, super effective at letting you get rid of unwanted blocks that you don't need to draw, letting you get rid of... Uh, unwanted strikes that you don't want to draw, or status cards. It lets you set up your turn so reliably, and it's such a commonly and easily available card. I think it really is truly exceptional. So highly recommend taking and upgrading Third Eyes when you see them, but don't forget to get that damage, right? Starter deck plus three copies of Third Eye does not a functional deck make, so you're gonna need some damage. But yeah, definitely, definitely recommend that card very strongly. Last on the list is Tranquility. This card is the counterpart to Crescendo. It gives you Calm on Retain rather than Wrath. If you find yourself on your Watcher runs frequently getting caught in Wrath Stance and taking double damage from an enemy and wishing that you had a card in your hand that could get you out of that Wrath Stance, then Tranquility might just be the card for you. I think at the higher levels of play, it's more effective to um, plan around your Vigilance and Eruption draws with stuff like Scry effects than it is to add a Retaining Stance Changer-like Tranquility, but there's definitely a role for this card, and it can be quite good, especially uh, on the upgrade, as an energy source too. Zero cost, enter calm, then if you enter Wrath immediately, it becomes uh, just plus two energy, essentially. And that can allow for some really powerful turns, too. The fact that it's only a single use, though, can hold it back in longer fights. Generally speaking, again, this is not my not my preferred card. I do prefer Crescendo, um, if I'm going to take one of the two of these cards, and I, I don't even like the Crescendo that much. A card I'm much more happy to see upgraded for free than it is one I'm happy to upgrade. So not, not a too big a fan of this one, especially not in the early game. All right, there's the common cards of the Watcher and how they kind of uh, play into and contribute to her style of uh, setting up uh, powerful damage turns and booping the enemies in Act 1. Again, just to kind of broadly summarize, really strong things for your Watcher in Act 1 and moving onwards. Get some upgraded attacks so that you can deal extra double damage when in Wrath Stance. Get some stance control so that you have control over whether you're in calm, wrath, or nothing. 
and get some scry so that you can look at the draw pile, discard strikes and defends that you don't want to draw, discard statuses that you don't want to draw. It all comes together in a beautiful, beautiful picture. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for, for watching the video. If you liked this vid, let me know in the comments below what your favorite watcher card to take on floor one is, even if it's not a common card. And thanks so much for watching. Ta-ta for now, everybody. Hey, hey, everyone. Thanks so much for watching. Did you know that I'm live five days a week on Twitch? Come join us to watch me live, ask questions, or chill with the community. Click the link in the description below to follow and be notified when I'm live. And while you're down there, make like a sandwich and sub to this channel for more fresh Baylor content. Ta-ta for now.